Dear students, welcome to EPG Partshala. Today we are going to discuss on principles of solar energy generation. The energy in sun is around 4 into 10 to the power 20 megawatt. But only less than 1 percentage is reaching the earth which is utilized. This solar radiation is utilized directly or indirectly. Directly for thermal applications like water heating, cooking, space heating, etc. Or it can be converted to electrical energy with the help of photovoltaic technology. It is very important to understand the function or the principle behind these technologies. In this module, we are going to, we, we are going to learn about what is the principle behind the solar photovoltaic technology and also the principles behind various solar thermal applications. We will also see the factors affecting the performance of these technologies. Sun is a gigantic star with a diameter of 1.4 million kilometer which release electromagnetic energy of about 4 into 10 to the power 20 megawatt. This energy extends from the wavelength 300 nanometer to 3000 nanometer. Majorly, these are classified as ultraviolet region, which is less than 350, visible region 350 to 750, and infrared region, which is more than 750 nanometer. You can see this in the solar spectrum. These various components of sunlight constitute this solar spectrum. The visible accounts 47% and infrared around 46% of this solar radiation that contributes from the uh, solar energy. It is important to understand the spectrum of sun energy as the technology which is used for energy generation and the conversion is driven by the input received from the respective spectrum of solar irradiance. The energy from heat and light of Solar radiation can be extracted to useful applications and the principle of operation is different depending on the technology. The PV technology that convert visible spectrum to electricity and thermal collectors use both infrared and visible spectrum for energy generation. So the energy generation from solar radiation can be in the form of electrical energy or thermal energy. This flow diagram shows the various conversion paths of solar energy into electrical and thermal energy. The solar radiation is directly converted by solar thermal, directly used by solar thermal collectors for the production of thermal energy. If we use the photovoltaic cell, it is converted to electrical energy. And there are concentrated solar energy that produces thermal energies as well as electrical energies and there are some hybrid collectors with which are photovoltaic thermal and concentrated photovoltaic thermal which can produce both these energies electrical as well as thermal energies. So the solar radiation can be used as thermal for thermal applications or converted to electrical energy. So let's see the principle of electrical Electric, electricity generation by the solar photovoltaics. It works on the principle of photovoltaic effect. It is the physical and chemical property or phenomenon in which electromotive force is generated in the non-homogeneous materials with the illumination of light of a specific wavelength. This effect produces voltage and electric current in a material upon exposure to light. This photovoltaic property is seen in semiconductors when photons or radiant energy falls on surface is capable of converting to electric current. There are majorly three energy bands in a semiconductor, filled band, conduction band and forbidden band. The forbidden band is so wide that an electron has to acquire sufficient energy to move from filled band to conduction band. This energy is known as band gap energy. 
the band gap energy in a silicon semiconductor is 1.12 electron volt the energy bands for other semiconductors like gallium arsenide is 1.42 and cadmium telluride is 1.5 electron volt the energy gap of the silicon semiconductor that is 1.12 electron volt indicates that the photons with energy in this wavelength corresponding to this 1.12 electron volt can initiate the electrons to jump and create current flow. Any wavelength below to that adds to heat losses in the cell. In a p-n junction, as long as the energy from the sun strikes, whole electron pair is created and continuously recombined. If the recombination is avoided and electron is forced to flow in one direction, it will facilitate the current flow in the system. Thus, it is made possible by a built-in electric field that is created within the semiconductor by making this semiconductor impure or extrinsic. An impure semiconductor will have an additional electron or an additional hole in it. Usually, a pentavalent impurity is added to create excess electrons and a trivalent impurity, adding, a trivalent impurity addition creates an excess hole. So, you can go for the pentavalent or trivalent doping. Let's see the calculation of band gap energy with an example. Find out the band gap energy for a semiconductor transparent to light of wavelength 0.87 micrometer. The photon energy of light is having the wavelength of 0 0.87 meter, 87 micrometer. And the speed of light is, that is C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So we know H nu is equal to H nu where nu can be substituted as C by lambda. So H nu is equal to H into C by lambda. Substituting the values, we will be getting 1.99 into 10 to the power minus 19 electron volt micrometer divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into 0 0.87 micrometer, which will give you 1.42 electron volt. So the gap, uh, so the band gap energy for semiconductor is 1.42 electron volt. So it, we can all, uh, also simplify this relationship as H nu electron volt is equal to 1.24 by lambda micrometer. So the solar cell is a p-n junction with a large surface area. The n-type material is thin for passing light through it and strike the p-n junction. The electricity is generated inside the depletion zone of the p-n junction. When a photon of light is absorbed by one of the atoms in the n region of silicon, it dislodges an electron from any atom creating a free electron and a hole pair. This free electron and hole pair has sufficient energy to jump out of the depletion zone. If a wire is connected from the cathode at n-type silicon to an anode of p-type silicon, electrons flow through the wire. The electron is attracted to the positive charge of p-type material and travels through the external load creating flow of electric current. This figure shows the vicinity of a p-n junction when exposed to light. The current generated from the solar cell can be represented to an equivalent p-n junction circuit response. An equivalent circuit for a p-n junction solar cell is given in this figure. And the intensity of incident radiation and external load of the cell determines IV characteristics that is current and the voltage characteristics of a solar cell. The voltage and current generation from the solar cell can be easily calculated from this equivalent circuit. Let's see what are the factors that affect the energy generation in a solar PV, solar photovoltaic cell technology. There are two main parameters that affects its performance output of a PV cell. The, these are temperature and the light, that is the photons incident on it. So the voltage output is driven by the change in the temperature and the current output is driven by the light received. The increase in the light input contributes to increase in the current output. 
However, the junction voltage reduces with the increase in the temperature. So, the factors are the factors that affect the energy generation in a PV technology are temperature and the light incident on it. Let us see the solar thermal technology. It is broadly classified into non concentrated and concentrated. Non concentrated solar thermal technologies includes the water heaters and solar dryers. While the concentrated solar thermal technology here the collectors, the concentrated collectors use optics to absorb sunlight and concentrate it to a receiver for energy conversion. In general, the energy generated from the, from the solar thermal technologies are used for heating application, solar cooking, solar drying, process heating, cooling and also electricity generation using solar steam. It includes or the examples of these concentrated solar thermal technologies are parabolic trough collectors, Scheffler collector, paraboloid collectors, linear Fresnel collector, Stirling engine etc. While the solar cooker has both concentrated and non-concentrated use solar cooker use both concentrated and non-concentrated thermal technology. The principles of solar thermal technology. The heat is an energy form produced by the movement of molecules. The heat transfer occurs between higher and lower temperature and is proportional to the difference in temperature. The three basic means of heat transfer are conduction, convection and radiation. Here the convection and conduction plays important role in the heat transfer mechanism in a solar system while radiation heat transfer facilitates the bringing of solar energy to the earth in the form of solar uh, in the form of electromagnetic spectrum. Radiation. The heat transfer phenomenon through longer wavelength infrared rays often transmitted across the space as a consequence of thermal agitation of composing molecules. Radiative heat transfer does not require a medium for energy transfer. The radiative flux is often quantified as the emission per unit time per unit surface area which is expressed as watt per meter square. The usual way to compare the energy emitted or absorbed by an object is to compare it with a black body. So a black body which is equally, a black body is equally a good emitter and an absorber. The solar collectors like aluminium or glass reflective collectors absorb sun's radiative energy from the space. The theoretical abstraction of uh, energy emitted from a black body is defined using Planck's law. The total energy between two wavelengths can be conveniently expressed using the Stefan Boltzmann law of radiation. So it is by this radiation process the heat is transferred across the space. Conduction, the heat transfer happening between two surfaces which are in direct contact with each other. The receivers in a solar thermal system absorb the solar energy and conducts the same to another medium for utilization. Convection, the heat transfer happening in between two mediums. For example, the liquid converting to gas using heat gain or gas conversion to liquid by the release of heat. What is the working principle of a solar collector? In a solar collector, the solar energy passes through a glazed glass layer and is absorbed. The solar energy excites the molecules, produces heat and gets trapped by the glass layer. Reflectors or absorbers. The main types of reflectors used in the solar thermal systems are aluminium or glass reflectors. The reflectivity of these collectors need to be as high as possible. The glass type reflectors have higher reflectivity and life, higher life compared to aluminium type reflectors. In the case of water heaters and solar cookers, there are absorbers which are black coated metal sheets. Receivers, these are used to collect the concentrated energy from the sun from the reflectors to a common point or area so as to magnify the energy in it. The ratio of the area of the reflector to the area of the receiver is termed as concentration ratio. And this concentration ratio signifies the strength of the system for higher energy conversion possibilities.
the solar collectors are classified based on the movement of absorber. It is classified into fixed focus system and moving focus system. In fixed focus system, the energy is focused at the absorber which is fixed at a definite focal axis. The reflectors are rotating so as to focus the sun energy at fixed point continuously throughout the day. While in a moving focus system, the energy from the sun is focused at the absorber which keeps moving along with the reflectors. The moving focus is characterized by higher throughput and hence higher efficiency. You can see the examples of moving focus and fixed focus solar collectors in this diagram. This picture shows a general understanding of the losses during the energy conversion in a concentrated solar thermal system. So the main losses involved in a concentrated solar system are reflector losses that is up to 25 percentage. The 25 percentage is lost in reflector. The absorption losses, other uh, losses are absorption losses and losses in the receiver. The efficiencies of the efficiencies of solar thermal system are between 25 and 30 percentage. But however, there are instances where certain dual axis concentrated system can has achieved even up to 55 percent. What is the principle of a solar cooker? So for heat production, it utilizes the principle of reflection, concentration and greenhouse effect. A solar box cooker works on the simple concept of this greenhouse effect. The incoming short wave radiation passes through transparent glazing material and is trapped inside a box where in the glassing where in the glazing glass act as a blockade for the re-radiated long wavelength radiation and this radiation or this heat trap can be used for the cooking. The principle of solar water heater. The solar collectors or solar panels which are in direct contact with the sun and the heat energy produced is used to heat up the water. The active water heater system works with the help of a pump which moves water from collector to the tank and passive system works on gravity. The most common processes of water heating is based on thermosiphon effect. It is relatively simple and does not require any external energy. Thermosiphon works on the basic principle of heat rising. In an open loop system, the water inlet to the solar collector is through the bottom side and as the water gets warm, it rises to the top. The warm water stays always at the top of the storage tank, which is collected as and when required. This is the pictorial representation of a thermosiphon based water heating system. In winters, the water is not used as a medium, but an antifreeze solution is used as circulating medium. And the heat is transferred to the water through a closed loop system. Principle of solar space heating. The three basic principles used for the solar space heating are the collection of solar radiation by the solar collectors and conversion to thermal energy. Storage of solar thermal energy in water tanks or the rock bins. And the distribution by means of active which is by the pumps or passive by the gravity methods. So the collection, storage and distribution lies in the solar space heating. Principle of a solar dryer. A solar air heater or dryer works on the principle of greenhouse effect and thermosiphon effect. The air in the air is the medium heated up from the solar energy absorbed by the black surface. The thermal energy absorbed is thus sustained inside a glass envelope. The air thus heated is driven upwards owing to its lower density. The hot air circulation is generally the passive but there are systems which have active systems for hot air circulation. Principle of solar water desalination. The basic working principle of solar water desalination is like a hydrological cycle where water is evaporated and then condensed by leaving back the contamination. The solar desalination cleans the water by vaporization with the help of a solar still, an airtight insulated basin covered with a tilted glass sheet. In a sloping transparent enclosure, the brackish water is collected, the thermal energy from the sunlight is trapped inside the vessel 
as vessel has a transparent glass cup. The energy thus accumulated can raise the water temperature up to 120 degrees Celsius and thus gets evaporated leaving behind the salt or the, the other contamination thereby it is getting the water is getting desaline. The, hum the humid and warm air thus risen comes in contact with relatively cooler inner surface of transparent cover which causes condensation. The water thus condensed slides down and collected in a truck along the lower end of the basin. This water is conducted out of the enclosure to get the fresh water. The heat is trapped inside the solar still by means of this greenhouse effect. Most of the solar concentrated system can help achieve a temperature in the range of 120 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius while single axis tracking system can raise the temperature up to 180 degrees Celsius and dual axis moving focus concentrated system can help to achieve up to 350 degrees Celsius. The factors affecting performance of solar thermal system. The main parameters that affect the performance of a solar thermal system are quality of the reflectors that is the reflectivity and the material type. Second is the optical design of the system third mean operating temperature of the system and for the location of the installation that is solar resource of the location. So these are the factors that affect the performance of a solar thermal system. So to conclude in this module we have seen the solar spectrum consists of consists mainly of the visible and infrared wavelength and we have seen different or the various paths to, for the conversion of this energy to electrical and thermal. We have seen the principle of the photovoltaic technology is basically the photovoltaic effect. This is a phenomenon where when a photon strikes a material it produces the EMF and that is converted to the electricity. And we have seen that the thermal technology, solar thermal technology can be non-concentrated or concentrated thermal technologies. And we have seen the different principles behind these thermal technologies. Like in solar water heating, the principle is thermosiphon effect, while in solar cooking, it is like uh, uh, radiation reflection, concentration and the uh, greenhouse effect. While in a Therm in a solar still, it works like a hydrological cycle where the evaporation and the condensation process leaves the, uh, the contaminant. And we have seen that the factors that affects the performance of a solar thermal technology are the quality of the reflector and the optical designing and location of the uh, installation, etc. While in a solar PV technology, the temperature and the incident light are important.